KWT slaying. Shalom family, welcome to another teaching from Tale Ministries. The title of this teaching is The Ancient World Part 5, Magic. So in this teaching, uh, we're going to go through and show how, um, you know, what we've learned in ancient mythology has some legitimacy uh, in terms of what the Bible teaches. And, and you know, you got to understand we're working with the spiritual realm. Right. These type of things are to be expected. So uh, this is going to be the final part. Um, uh, you know, maybe in the future, there may be some more that I go into, um, you know, maybe more of a comparative analysis of the uh, ancient myths um, and, and, you know, the gods of the Sumerians and things like that. We might get into that, but uh, part five will be the last of the ancient world series. So one thing I want to say before I get started, um, you know how, how Jacoba is, you know, um, I don't like when people lie on me, right? So this guy comes on one of our videos and say, well, you know, Till, you've been saying that, you know, we're going to be out of here at, at 400 years and the year is almost up. So. You know, you're wrong about that, even though I like to listen to you. Okay. Well, I'm like, okay, did you listen to my video? Did you really watch my video? Or are you a troll? You know, because if you had listened to my video, you would see that multiple times. I said, this is my opinion, right? About the 400 years, the end of the captivity, right? I said, it's the end of the curse, right? I said we will probably have a second exodus based upon what I see. How many times did I say, I'm not God, I don't know for sure. This is my guess. Did I set any dates? No, I did not. There's always a troll. I told you, even after I gave all of those caveats in the beginning of the videos, right? A hundred times at least, I knew a joker was going to come. I said, Dale. I mean, it, it irks me when people lie on me. So, you know, I'm like, don't come around me and tell me what I did not say. Okay, don't do that. Because you will get blocked. I will block you. Okay? Now, if you want to talk about fulfillment of prophecy, okay, everything's lining up. And if you had listened to what I said, it's more than likely August 2020 than August 2019. But either way, you could say the curse is over anyway. Because you have a bunch of black women who are just winning all kinds of awards, right? Not only that, you have a global call for reparations. Not only that, you have a global drive of Israelites or black people, whatever you want to call them, African-Americans, who wants to go back to Africa. According to the, you know, their statistics, I think is greater than, than, our, than, than what they say. They say 4% of U.S. people identify, or black people, identify as Israelites. That's 4%. There's 74.5 million African-Americans that they identify, they call us, that, that are 
in the U.S. So 4% of that is 2.9 million. So according to them, there's almost 3 million people who identify as Israelites. Now let's add to that the global wake up and recognition of being Israel in Africa, in the U.K., in all the other places and islands around the world. There's a reason why they fear us. And there's a reason why they're passing these laws and getting ready to persecute us. So this is my little rant for those out there who want to come and say I said things that I did not say. You will get blocked. You lie on me. Okay, now let's move on. The Ancient World Part 5. Magic. What is magic? And is magic mentioned in the Bible? It may be hard to believe, but magic is in the Bible. Many miraculous things have occurred in the Bible. When they are done by God, it is a miracle. When it is done by people contacting familiar spirits, then it is considered magic, and in many cases, black magic. Now, Wikipedia describes magic in the following terms. Magic, sometimes known as sorcery, is a conceptual system that asserts human ability to control or predict the natural world, including events, objects, people, and physical phenomena through mystical, paranormal, or supernatural means. Let me sum it up in a, a tale definition. People playing with the spirit world. That's what it is. People working with whether, you know, uh, they're doing it, uh, you know, in other religions, worshiping other quote-unquote gods, because there are other gods with a lowercase g who are called fallen angels, okay? They're called fallen angels, but those cultures, remember, if you see the teachings I did before, they are the B'nai, B'nai A Elohim, the sons of God, right, who fell, who, who came down and taught men, according to Enoch, how to do many things and have, you know, all of these different inventions. Okay, these are the things that's happening behind the scenes, and these are the things that empower people who are not following Yahuwah. Okay, so so magic is people contacting the spirit realm, being empowered by the spirit realm. It is the spirit realm manifesting in the physical. They call it magic. Black magic. Using magic through paranormal or supernatural means is the use of incantations, sacrifices, and other man-made practices that allows the spirits of hell to empower a person. Some may be able to predict the weather, others cast spells on someone. When spells are cast on others, this will fall into the category of black magic. Okay, so the Bible sees all magic as being the power of Satan because men consult familiar spirits for power instead of seeking the living God. So there's two places to get power. One is from the creator of the universe, Yahuwah, Yeshua, Jesus to Christ, because all things are created by him and for him, right? And the other side is Satan and the fallen angels. So those who do not get power from Yahuwah, they get power from Hasitan. Janus and Jambres. During the time of the Exodus, a prime example of magic in the Bible was when Janus and Jambres turned their staffs into snakes, just like Moses did, Exodus 7, verses 10 through 12. You can go and read it for yourself. Although Moses' staff turned into a serpent, it was by the power of God. But the two magicians in Pharaoh's court did it by the power of the devils. So this is an example of magic, right? You've seen the stories of King Arthur and Merlin. And Merlin pretty much was the court wizard and he had powers this is the same with Janus and Jambres magic exists and some of some of our people be messing with things they don't know about especially in Africa but some of some of our people here especially the women they're messing with things they don't know about either thinking they're going into ancestor uh, religion and 
They're going into uh, voodoo and things like that. They don't know what they're dealing with. They're like, we're going to the religion of our forefathers and we're moving away, you know, from what the colonialists uh, imposed on us. Yeah, you're going into what got us kicked out of the land and into slavery for 400 years. That's what you're getting into, Joker. Moses and Aaron versus Janice and Jambres. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Magic. Frogs. Another example of the use of magic is when Moses and Aaron caused frogs to come upon the land of Egypt, and the magicians of Pharaoh's kingdom were able to do the same with the use of enchantments. Exodus 8, 5 through 7. So, like I said, there's two places to get power. One is from the creator of the universe, Yahuwah, from Yeshua, his son, Jesus the Christ. The other is from the fallen angels, demons, devils. Two powers in this world. You're getting it from one or the other. Some of you new age people, y'all in trouble. Some of you sisters who are going back into the occult. Y'all are getting in trouble. Now, the Israelites, right? You know, whether or not you're a law keeper or not, they're not getting involved in that mess. Okay, now. You know, as you know, you know, I believe in grace through faith, which means the law is written in my heart, which means I'm led by the promptings and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Right. And he brings to my remembrance those things that are written in my heart. So I don't have to check off the list, but I digress. Enchantments. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams. Over the rivers and over the ponds and caused frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt and frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Two powers. One from God, one from the fallen. There's no in-between. There's no natural you know, power force other than the spirit realm interfacing with the physical. So you're getting power from one or two places. Magic today and in the future. We can see from the book of Revelation that the Antichrist and false prophet are going to perform signs and wonders that will deceive the masses. Daniel 8 23 states that when the transgressors have come to their full, a king of fierce countenance will arise understanding dark sentences. What are dark sentences? That's dark magic. That's black magic. These people are not playing. Do y'all know this is a war? Do y'all know what we fighting against? These people in control today, the they interface with dark magic. Ronald Reagan and his wife, what did they do? They went and had their palms read. They went to people who understand dark sentences. They are in the occult, yet they call themselves what? Christians, most of them. They're playing a dangerous game. The Witch of Endor. Another example of the use of magic is when the witch of Endor called Solomon back from the dead to talk to King Saul. 1 Samuel 28, 3-25. Saul asked his servants to find him a woman that has a familiar spirit. The reason Saul did this is because after Samuel died, Saul could not get a word from God. He did not obey God by destroying Amalek, so God did not listen to his prayers. Therefore, Saul sought a witch who could contact the spirit world. Saul knew the woman was possessed. That is why he wanted a woman with a familiar spirit. 
See, familiar spirits mean there are spirits who are familiar with you. And they know things about you. And they know things about your history and your ancestors. So the Most High did not talk to Saul anymore. So he went to the only other power that there is, which is dark power, which is demonic power from the fallen angels. This is not a game, family. And see, today they want you to be in this technological, uh, pristine, uh, evolutionary Darwinism mindset when the real world is power, spiritual power, magic. And we don't understand how that works too much. But the ancient cultures do. And some of our enemies do. And so things happen. And you don't know why. Which is why you have to be close to the Most High Yah. You need to be born again. Because if you're not born again, you have no power. So when this fight hits you on the spirit realm, you're going to fold like a piece of paper. You're going to crumple like a piece of paper. Israelites and magic. Simon the sorcerer is a good example of an Israelite that wanted the power of pagans. According to the scriptures, he amazed people by the magic he was able to perform. However, when he heard the gospel, he believed and was saved. Now, consider Simon. He was still full of sin when he saw that people could receive the power of the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands. He tried to purchase this power from the, from the apostles. When the apostles told him the trouble that would befall him for such a request, he repented and asked for forgiveness. So Simon the sorcerer had power from the dark side first. Then he saw people being saved and empowered by the Holy Spirit. And he wanted to try to purchase that power. There's two powers in this world. Dark power and power of good. Power from the Holy Spirit. There's no in between. If you doing stuff, whether or not you thinking, you know, you're interfacing with some spiritual force of the world or the universe. If, if it's not coming from Yahuwah, it's coming from the enemy. There's no in between. Some of y'all playing a dangerous game. Israel's disobedience. The quest for power was strong in ancient times. The Israelites were constantly seduced by the power from the demonic realm. But after the Messiah came, many people put away their magic books and incantations. And sought the power of God instead. Read Acts chapter 19 verses 17 through 19. Voodoo and Israel. Many Israelites believe that this power that the pagans had was good for getting what they wanted until they met the apostles. And realized that this power came from the devils. Numerous pagans believed that these devils that gave them power were gods. But they were really fallen angels or the wandering spirits of the dead Nephilim. We see this continuing today in Africa where some of our people still practice voodoo rituals. They're still messing with the occult, with the powers of darkness. It might be tradition. It might be African tradition. But African tradition, which is Hebrew Israelite tradition, a lot of it, is turning away from the Most High and worshiping pagan gods. Bowing before statues, which is what they're doing in Africa. Y'all playing a dangerous game. I don't care how enlightened you think you are. Going back to your ancestors' religion. Well, your ancestors' religion really was what you call the religion of the Hebrews. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm not going to call it Judaism. But you don't want to go there because you think that's a white man religion. Some of you are. King Saul and the Forbidden. Saul, being an Israelite, also ignored the rabbis, right? And asked the witch of Endor to bring the prophet Samuel up from the underworld. When she did this and saw that it was Samuel, she realized that it was King Saul taking, talking to her. The man who had promised that all people who had familiar spirits would be put to death. But Saul informed her that he would not kill her. He asked her what she saw. She stated that she saw gods or Elohims ascending out of the earth. 
Saul began to talk to Samuel, and Samuel asked Saul, why have you brought me up? Samuel had to have been brought up from Abraham's bosom, as we mentioned before. So remember, family, we, we talked about where, uh, you know, the patriarchs and the prophets and, and, you know, all the people of God were when they died before Christ came. They were in Abraham's bosom. In the ancient Greek mythology, it was called Elysian Field. So, even King Saul knew that this woman had powers. He went to the dark side because God would not talk to him anymore. So, she was able to bring Samuel back. Now, God allowed it, apparently. And, uh, you know, I don't know if Saul learned a lesson from that or not. But I would think so after Saul, Samuel came back from the underworld and, and rebuked him that he learned a lesson. Stop playing with the dark side. Especially you Hebrew women out there. You know, some of you all were Hebrew Israelites and then you ran away. You know, which, you know, I can understand if you was a camp camp member see that's the problem i told you being in the camp is a problem you know most of the urban apologists today who are attacking the israelites were former camp members they've been abused they've been mistreated and lied to and then these people woke up and now they're totally against the idea that the negro is the true hebrew israelites of the bible But I told you, I, I believe a lot of these camps are cointel pro. Meant to cause division and confusion within the awakening process, but they can't stop it. They know for a fact that ain't nothing like this ever happened on the planet before. There's been other movements in the past, but how many movements have been global? How many movements have been in the millions that now... You know, a people who they had no recognition, who had no identity, have an identity, who realize that they are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. I'm just saying. So magic is real. If magic was not real, the Bible would not give us so many examples of its use. It would not be prohibiting us from using magic or prohibiting us from contacting the dead. The ancient world's understanding of the spirit world was more accurate than ours today. And that understanding is interpreted today to be mythology. So in, in the ancient world, you notice, like, you know, you had the demoniac. He was demon possessed, right? And uh, Christ cast out those spirits and it went into, uh, in, in, into the uh, pigs and the pigs ran into the ocean. So, you know, now why did these people, you know, end up demon possessed? More than likely, they were opening doors they shouldn't have opened. They were messing with the spirit realm. They were trying to get power, like Simon the Sorcerer. You see this today, even in the, like some of the, you know, I don't know if y'all watch it, anime, right? Japanese anime. You know, they, 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 the Japanese has this, have this thing about getting power from the spirit realm. They're playing with devils. Now, there's many things about the Japanese culture I like, you know, the, the whole thing about honor and friendship and all this stuff. But they be playing with some dangerous games because they're de dealing with devils. Unless they're born again Japanese person, you know, th their culture is geared towards getting power from the spirit realm. But I can tell you, they understand a lot of stuff that we don't. We think we're intellectually bright. We think we're at the technological height of, of evolution, which isn't the case. First of all, technology was higher back in the past. Okay. And people were using magic. But, you know, like I said, you're either dealing with magic from Yahuwah or from the devil. Ain't no in between. It's dangerous. And I see a lot of our Hebrew Israelite women, whether or not they recognize being Israelite, turning to the occult. They're turning, 
you know, to to the power of the universe and positive thinking and all that crap. Pagan gods. Israel continued to follow after pagan gods, and Father Yahuwah would continue to punish our ancestors for their sins. The Israelites love to seek after signs, but no sign shall be given them but the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, or Yeshua. The Bible states that a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. God wants people to follow and obey him for who he is and for what he's done. But our ancestors love to see the miraculous and continue to seek after signs. The false gods of the pagans continued to draw the people of Israel to their pagan ways and continued to lead them away from God, which is why we went into captivity worldwide. Magic from the demonic realm is real, and they were seduced by it, even unto this day in Africa. Let go those pagan traditions, my African brothers and sisters. Israel, true Israel ain't going back to that crap. We serve the living God, not spirits who peep and mutter. We live by the power of the Holy Spirit, not by wicked de fallen demons. I'm telling you, some of y'all deceived. King Misha. Finally, there is a strange story in the Bible where the nation of Israel was fighting against Misha, the king of the Moabites. King Misha had a covenant with King Ahab of Israel to deliver to him 100,000 lambs and 100,000 rams. After King Ahab died, Jeroboam became the king of Israel. King Misha saw the death of Ahab as an opportunity to attack Israel. But when King Jeroboam realized this, he made an agreement with King Jehoshaphat of Judah and the king of Edom to unite against the Moabites and to fight against King Misha. As the three kings marched against Moab, they realized that there wasn't any water for their cattle, so they looked for Elisha, a prophet of the Lord. Elisha told them to dig several ditches, and the Lord would fill the ditches with water and would also give the Moabites into his hands. Ditches of blood. <laughs> when the Moabites saw that the armies of Israel were approaching them, they went to the border of their city to confront them. When they arrived to the border, they saw the sun shining on the water and thought that the three kings had fought one another and filled ditches with blood. When the Moabites attacked, thinking that only a remnant of the three king armies remained, King Joram and the other two kings attacked the Moabites and chased them into their own country. Israel and their armies laid waste to the cities. When King Mesha saw that he was losing the battle, he took 700 men to attack the king of Edom and his armies, but, the, but this act failed. The strange thing about this story is the fact that King Misha wanted to win so much that he sacrificed his eldest son, who was to rule in his stead. <clears throat> Following this event, the armies of Israel became terrified and they returned to their own land. Why are sacrifices important in the spirit world? We know why in the Israelite world it was important because it foreshadowed the finished work of the Messiah. However, why did ancients sacrifice their children as well? There is some type of power they expected to be gained from the act. Strange world indeed. So <clears throat> if you're sacrificing your son in ancient times, then you're expecting a huge power or favor from quote unquote what they call the gods. We know those gods with the lowercase g of fallen angels. The B'nai I Elohim, the ones who, who fell and came down and landed on Mount Hermon, as some teach. So, apparently, this is like the currency of the spirit world. And it could answer why America and a lot of the Western nations continuously slaughter millions of people around the globe. Huge sacrifices. Same thing with abortion. These people are seeking power. To maintain in power. We got to realize the Bible teaches a different world than what we see in quote unquote Christian churches. They don't, they don't, they don't lay it out the way it is. This is a spiritual battle fought on a physical plane family. You cannot take this lightly and you cannot play with sin. 
because you will get caught in a trap. Conclusion. The use of witchcraft and sorcery is throughout the Bible, and this ability to use black magic indeed manifests some type of result for the practitioners. The Bible forbids those who trust in Yahuwah from doing like the pagans because they use the power of the devils. The ancient cultures were identified with their gods and the nation of Israel got protection and power from Father Yah. The pagan nations received their power from their national gods. The ancient world was much different than today. I believe from the scriptures that the world will return to the worship of devils. As a matter of fact, we see devil worshippers openly proclaiming themselves as a religion now. We see people going back into ancestral worship and the New Age religion. Some are Israelite women and men. The revival of paganism is already being seen today. And there can be no doubt that the Old and New Testament was written in an environment filled with magical beliefs and practices, practices that showed forth actual results, though not ordained of the Most High. So we see things, family, in the Bible, right, that today we don't even think about whether or not it's still occurring today, right? But these people, we, we see hints of it, like in the Bohemian Grove, we see hints of it. They're still doing it. They're still sacrificing the Moloch. They're still killing and offering babies. It's still happening. But we shoo-shoo it. All these people that disappear, where do you think they're going? All of them aren't being trafficked for sex. Some are being offered as sacrifices. See, the churches don't teach you the truth of the scriptures, most of them. Now, it's good that a lot of them teach about the gospel and salvation, which is the most important, but it's not the only thing. It's not the only thing. Because the Bible says move from milk to meat, which is, you know, the gospel of salvation to repentance and to the weight of your things. And people who don't know their Bible, they'd be like, what are you talking about? He comparing the gospel to milk. What well, the Bible does. And, and, and the urban apologists don't know nothing. They think they're apologists, but they can't stand. They can't stand. They, that's why they don't debate. That's why they try to talk over you. They know in an honest debate they will lose against Tail. They will lose against Dante Forson. So we got to understand that what we call magic is the spirit world interfacing with the physical. And things occur that seem supernatural. And in the times to come, people are going to worship the false prophet and antichrist because they're going to see magic, quote unquote, false miracles. Today's churches have been sanitized. They don't teach the whole council. That's the problem I have with them. You know, but a lot of them still under the control of Rome is my conclusion. So, family, you know, if you like what we do and you want to support this ministry, uh, go to www.patreon.com slash T-E-O-T-W and become a patron. We really appreciate your support. I mean, very few of you all, uh, you know, are members, uh, you know, uh, but the ones who are, we really do appreciate the support. We really do. And, uh, you know. Um, we pray that you're blessed by these teachings and that you're learning things that you've never learned before. And uh, make sure that you go back and validate everything that we teach you. Okay, we, we try our best to be honest and truthful in everything we do. We don't believe in lying. We don't believe in deception like some of these people out there. Because we serve the living God and we fear the living God. I mean, if you know the most high, you don't play with the most high. He's our king. He does whatever he will. We bow the knee. Tell ministries bow the knee to the most high. Yeah. To the Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. Peace and blessings, Israel. Your captivity is ending. Going back to Africa. Investing, we got cribs over there.
kids going to school, we're embracing culture from over there, we're a part of that, respecting that. They gonna talk to black Flo, people different. King, Stone, proud son of Ghana, Africa. I hear the drums talking. I come from the mother from motherland. So we the few kurum here in Kenya. Oye da o jobasu. That's an Ashanti adage. Knowing your roots is your knowledge. They will never teach you in college. Your foundation for be solid. This be the year of return. Melanin kings and queens. Bekasa, Sukasa. Welcome to the motherland. It's been long, you've been gone. Sons of Zion living in Babylon, you've been wrong, but it's gone. I'll come back to Africa where you belong. This is the year of return. This is the year of return. The year 400 of return. years this year, exactly. Since this is the year of return. The year of return. Transatlantic slave trading started this bringing is the black year of people return. from Africa to America. This be the year of return. The year of return. This is the year of return. Never call me a bastard again. My great grand was a king. Royalty shining my blinks. Black Panther Avengers, we know we here for revenge. We just the free on our mind then. Working together with strength. Then. The sons of the sun, eclipsed by the moon in the cold. This is the time that we shine. Tell them a man is a man. We bleed the same blood, we are one. Our forefathers suffer so we can be great. Why are we killing ourselves? It's a shame. We are blessed with the rhythm, the style, and the living. A brother from Africa, stone is my name. We want to be able to give our this ancestors the, year of the worthy year of honor that they deserve. This is the year of return. Their resilience of producing the greatest generation this of Africans of that ever existed. That is our mission. This be the year of return. The year of return. May the blessings of all be upon you. Let us be connected through our ancestry and the spirits. Go back to Africa. Whatever you're doing here, do it there. This is the year of return. The year of return. This is the year of return. The year of return. This is the year of return. The year of return. This be the year of return. The year of return. We will work together to make sure that never again. We allow a handful of people with superior technology to walk into Africa, seize our peoples, and sell them into slavery.